Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound and I am back with the second video for chapter 22 on internal transport. This We're still in section 22a, the circulatory system. Our objectives for today's video are to describe the structures of the heart and their functions, trace the blood flow through the heart, and describe the cardiac cycle. So if you hadn't guessed, we are talking about the heart today. Here is a diagram of the heart and take some time to pause the video and write down all of these parts that we're going to be talking about. They are the aorta, the pulmonary artery, pulmonary veins, the left atrium, left ventricle, septum, right ventricle, inferior vena cava, right atrium, and the superior vena cava. So let's first talk about the superior and inferior vena cavas. These both bring deoxygenated blood from the body to the left atrium of the heart. Now, they are both veins. That's where the vena part comes from. So veins always bring blood back to the heart. They're called superior and inferior, not because one is better than the other, but because one is higher than the other. If you remember our anatomy terms, superior means above, inferior means below. So your, say in the army, a superior officer would be above the inferior officer. And so this just has to do with position. Superior is more towards the head, inferior more towards the feet. And because of their position, the superior vena cava does in fact bring deoxygenated blood from the head and the brain. And the inferior vena cava brings blood from the lower portions of the body to that left atrium. And so if we take a look at our diagram again, here's the superior vena cava, here's the inferior vena cava, and here's the right atrium. Now, one thing we're going to pay attention to is that on the right side of the heart, which you're like, what, wait a minute, that's the left. But this is like somebody is laying in front of you on a table, like an operating table. So remember everything in anatomy left and right wise is switched. Now, one thing we I want to point out is on the right side of the heart, this is all deoxygenated blood on the right side. So the right atrium is the chamber that collects deoxygenated blood from the body. So right here, the vena cava is coming in. This is deoxygenated blood coming in from the body. This is uh, the hole for the superior vena cava. This is for the inferior. Now, from there, the blood will go to the right ventricle. This is the chamber that pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So here is a valve, and the right atrium is going to pump that blood into the right ventricle. The right ventricle is going to then send this blood to the lungs via the pulmonary arteries. So the pulmonary arteries are blood vessels that carry deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So right here, so our path, superior vena cava, cava, excuse me, the right atrium, right ventricle to these pulmonary arteries that are going to the lungs. So whenever you see the word pulmonary, that has to do with the lungs. From the lungs, the oxygen will go to the pulmonary veins. So these are blood vessels that carry oxygenated blood back to the heart. So these veins right here are going back to the heart. You see the arrows going back to the heart. They will go to the left atrium. This is the chamber that collects oxygenated blood from the lungs. So the atria always collect blood coming from somewhere else. So these pulmonary veins are going into this left atrium here. And remember, these are collection chambers. From there, the blood goes to the left ventricle. This is the chamber that pumps oxygenated blood to the body. So 
On the left side of the heart here, we have oxygenated blood. So the blood goes from the left atrium to the left ventricle, and then it gets pumped to the rest of the body. Now, I remember that ventricles are on the bottom because they form a V shape. See this V shape formed by these ventricles? That's how I know that they are on the bottom, and that's how I remember that. And also, look at how muscular the heart is down here. Those uh, this diagram is drawn that way for a reason. This is much more muscular because these ventricles have to be able to pump blood to this left ventricle to the rest of the body. So it has to be very strong to do that. Then there's the or aorta. This is the blood vessel that takes oxygenated blood away from the heart. So this is the artery, the aorta right here, that is going to take it to uh, different parts of the body, to the head, to the heart itself, some blood, and down to all parts of the body. So these three vessels branching off of it, these three arteries, are going to take blood to different parts of the body. There's also the septum. It separates the right and left sides of the heart. We can see the septum running up through the heart here. If there is a hole in the septum, it would permit the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So it's important that there is not a hole. Sometimes children are born with a hole in their heart in the septum, and so there will be some mixing of the blood. Many times that hole does, in fact, close up. However, sometimes it doesn't, and then surgery is needed to correct that problem. There is also the pericardium. It is a fibrous sac that in closes the heart. So just like the lungs are enclosed by the pleura, the heart is enclosed by the pericardium. Now let's talk about the cardiac cycle. Uh, the cardiac cycle has two parts. There is the systole, that is the contraction of the heart muscle. And actually, in this uh, echocardiogram here, you can see that contraction of the atrium right here. The contractions of the ventricles are here. Um, the atrium, because it's just taking blood and putting it from itself into the ventricle doesn't have to have as much power behind it, not like the ventricles. The diastole is the relaxation of the heart muscle. So that relaxation takes place here in this area. So this is the heart beat where there is a contraction of the heart and then relaxation here. Now the where the heartbeat starts is the sinoatrial node, and this is the stimulus for a normal heartbeat where it begins. It is right here, as it says, atrial in the atrium. There is also, uh, we saw in the echocardiogram, the second part, which is the atrioventricular node. This is what causes the ventricles to beat, and it's this radiation across. So the sinoatrial node, it, it stimulates the heartbeat for both atria. It radiates to the left. And the atrioventricular node does the same thing. You can see all of these branches here. It's going to be radiating that heartbeat out in that manner. The human heart is timed so that the atria contract to fill the resting ventricles. And then there's a little bit of a lapse, and then the ventricles will then contract. Now, I mentioned this uh, already, an ECG or an EKG, uh, an echocardiogram. This measures the electrical activity of the heart. And like I said, there was a small bump for the contraction of the atria, then this is the ventricle, and then there's a rest period. The normal adult resting heart rate is about 70 beats per minute. So that is normal. It is faster for children because they are smaller. 
Now, another important thing that I need to talk about is a coronary thrombosis. This occurs when a clot blocks vessels supplying blood to the heart tissue. It is the most common cause of a heart attack. And this animation in the background, you can see um, over here, there is this plaque. There is this buildup on the side of the blood vessel. And what happens is that then gets scraped away and gets clogged in one of these valves. And it also sometimes will promote clotting because there will be damage then left. And so it will cause blood clotting to form. And so that is when you get a coronary thrombosis. A thrombosis is basically a big fancy word for blood clot. Um, that's what we get when we are bruised as well. So our objectives were to describe the structures of the heart and their functions, trace the blood flow through the heart, and describe the cardiac cycle. Don't forget your five questions in the margins, and I will be back with one more video about the circulatory system.